Thailand. Otherwise known as the land of 100 million scooters, 80% of Thai households own at least one motorbike, and it causes some problems. But there is one problem that stood out from the rest, and that is Dick Wen. Like. Gangs of hundreds plagued the street of Bangkok, racing scooters in the early hours of the morning, until eventually the authorities were forced to take action. This is the story of Thailand's most hated subculture. <laughs> so I travelled all the way to Thailand to track down the Dek Wen and learn about them myself. Uh, we've just arrived, but we're kind of like on a hunt for these supposed biker gangs. We don't really know what we're looking for. I first heard about Dek Wen from a friend of mine, professional freerunner and celebrity, Anan Anwar. We've come here to kind of research a bit about this Dek Wen thing. There is a thing here in Thai culture called Dek Wen. Young rebellious teenage culture where you know kids kind of band together and create kind of motorbike gangs but not like in the cool Harley Davidson like big expensive motorbikes it's just really kind of like scooters everyone's got these kind of scooters because it's what they can afford I grew up in Pattaya and Pattaya known like they have reputation in many many things as many people know and one of it is Dick Wen. It's a lot of them before, okay. meaning early 2000, 2010, around that area. <laughs> People think about Dick Wen as uh, troublemakers, a bunch of kids that have problems. Dick Wen is in a name, right? Wen Wen is very loud. <laughs> very annoying to have them around because you can't sleep. There's, there's drugs as well, they love to prank. <laughs> So the origins of the Dek Wen are pretty hard to find out. One theory she suggests pointed to a film named A Moment of Romance. This story was about a bank heist that the getaway driver was on a motorbike. But in his getaway, he kidnapped a beautiful young lady and took her hostage. After preventing her from being killed by his accomplices, the two began to form a forbidden relationship, causing mayhem and chaos for their friends and family. You know, whether this film is the exact inspiration for Dek Wen or not, it doesn't really matter, as the story has many crossovers to the actual world of Dek Wen. Motorbikes, crime, and a forbidden relationship between a man and a woman. We have just found a moped shop. These are everywhere, there's so many of these. We're making a video, yeah, about Dek Wen. You know, Dek Wen. No. So far, we were having no luck finding Dek Wen anywhere. It was seeming as if this culture was a thing of the past. Before we carry on with this video, I want to give a massive shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring. Squarespace is the number one platform for building and developing your own website. These days, it's more important than ever to have a good looking website. And many people think making a website is very tricky, and it is, but Squarespace simplifies the whole process. By having tons of really professional templates that you can choose from and personalize them to fit your brand and what it is you do. Along with built-in features like email marketing, appointment scheduling, e-commerce. It's fun, it's quick to do, and it's very cost-effective. So be sure to head over to squarespace.com forward slash Jimmy the Giant. And to get 10% off your first purchase of a website or a domain, use the code Jimmy the Giant. Anyway, back to the video. But before we get too deep into that, let's just identify what Dek Wen look like. Let's start off with the lady, so Dek Skoy. Dek Wen wanted to attract the most beautiful woman to be on the back of his bike. So for the Dek Skoy, their looks and their appearance really mattered. For haircuts, it was often tied up, maybe plaited. They would take their hair and then brutally try and dye it with cheap hair products. Going for a blonde that would always end up more ginger. Or gold, but it would end up looking brown. They would then powder their skin to be slightly whiter and they would really redden up their lips. Many of them would wear coloured contact lenses to make their eyes blue, which isn't really a natural colour for a Thai person. They would then have piercings, some tattoos. For clothes, it was often a very tight singlet, you know, that shows off the belly and a little bit of cleave for the boys. You'd then have your ripped jean shorts that expose their legs. This would lead to many Dexcoy having burns all down their legs. From having their exposed leg touch the exhaust and other parts of the engine that were very hot. Now for the Dek Wen, the boys. 
In terms of what they would wear, it's kind of hard to pin down exactly. It was kind of low effort and pretty much an afterthought. They'd make the exact same mistake that the Dexcoy made by dyeing their hair with cheap products, leading it to often be ginger, which nonetheless they'd proudly spike up with some hair gel. When it comes to clothes, there weren't exactly particular brands that were like Dequen brands. I mean, perhaps they would wear some fake clothes, like maybe fake Gucci, fake Supreme, perhaps a bum bag, maybe a vest. Levi jeans were quite common to protect their legs when they're on the motorbike. But one thing that was very important was the flip flop. But you see, there was a reason why the Deck Wen didn't really have a clothing style per se, and that was because there was something far more important to worry about, the bike. So what kind of modifications do they do to the bikes? Um, the most common one I see is wheels. They put bicycle wheels, so the thinner the better, the louder the exhaust the better. Um, they remove the mirrors as well, that's a very important part, no mirrors. So that's why a lot of times when you see them riding, they always look back like that. The, trying to make the, the bike very flashy with stickers and changing like the color to maybe pink, like light green, you know, blue, just to stand out. The amount of money they spend modifying the bikes, they could buy a big bike with, that comes just fast, you know, with good parts, but kind of respect their commitment to it because it's really like, it's grown from something like kids in the countryside do to like a proper big national wide thing between them. The bike was the most important thing and there was one type of bike that was the most popular and that was the Honda Wave series. Yeah. Hondas, I would say the most popular used, specifically the Waves really the small cc bikes maybe around like 120 cc's or something like that specifically condos because they're reliable fast and very cheap if you spend five minutes in bangkok the first thing you'll notice is the traffic and this is where the bike really shines what? What? What on? weaving in and out maneuvering through traffic is much more easy on a bike than it is a car meaning that thailand just has insane amounts of bikes resulting in many of these bike owners not having helmets insurance or licenses because it's nearly impossible for any police officer to go after them there's so much traffic everywhere skilled deck wen could easily get away from it can you describe deck wen to me oh, look. she is oh, what the fuck normally deck wen would be like <laughs> the noise that you make every night is so annoying like nowadays people know that Gwen is kind of like like lame every day every day every, every, day, day, every time when they when i see them we just yell at them like you must you see, the bikes were much more than just a mode of transportation. It was deeper than that. The bikes represented status. Kind of a culture of unfortunate uh, people, of, kids of unfortunate background, more of the, the ghettos and stuff like that. They, they create these big gangs of like, before it used to be maybe 50, 60 people gathered together on the street with their scooters and their friends on their back, like maybe two, three people on their back just kind of riding around town. Be like a guy care about his bike, you know, to like to show off like girls or like other males, you know. The interesting thing about Deck when they were sort of low on the social rung. They didn't have money, so the only thing that would give them a feeling of status was their bikes. Their bike and how they rode it, how it looked, the girl on the back. That was your access to having some kind of status in your community. See, as the Dequen culture grew more and into the 2000s, they became a bigger and bigger nuisance. What was like the public opinion of it? Definitely kind of grew to become considered a nuisance. You know, you're just having these kids gathering together with nothing to do. They're going to get up to no good. They're making a lot of noise. They're disrupting traffic. You know. Do you like them or? Like noise? Oh, they're loud. Do you like them? <laughs> And then, as we were traveling around Thailand, we experienced this problem firsthand. The police are on their way to have a look. Two young kids on a scooter tried to overtake us whilst we were turning in and smashed straight into the back of us. Neither of them had a helmet, and one of them went unconscious for about five minutes. Nearly, nearly a fatal accident as I pulled out some kids, two 
potentially deck wet and just slammed into so it was pretty horrific i can't lie they were just kids on a motorbike but effectively i got a glimpse into the problem with the deck when they are kids on motorbikes being crazy on motorbikes and we very much just had a, a situation where genuinely two kids could have died they didn't they were fine but that would have been on absolute mass in bangkok like bangkok is super busy with traffic there's people everywhere constantly cars driving quickly and then you'd have these deck when going in and out of cars on their little motorbikes is super dangerous over time they started splitting into separate gangs these gangs would cause trouble and they would fight each other they would race illegally through the streets of bangkok at 2 a.m in the morning making a ton of noise and keeping people awake and so as time passed a real hatred grew for the deck when as Facebook popped up, more and more groups for Deck Gwen were formed. They became organized and these meetups would have hundreds and hundreds of people blocking off roads, making noise and intimidating the locals. And over time, even official legal races started happening where these Deck Gwen could actually make money from their racing. One competition in particular gave away 2 million baht, which roughly equals about $60,000. So we're sat here just enjoying some food. Everyone's been very polite, very kind. Everyone's very nice. And that's a general theme I've noticed across Thailand. People don't want to be intrusive. They don't want to be rude. They're very polite. But the deck when I think is like a complete rebellion to that idea. The idea that mainstream Thai culture is one way and the deck when were totally the opposite. So the hatred for deck when kind of makes total sense because they are the opposite of what is expected of your typical Thai person. Kind of a nuisance to the local kind of uh, residential people so it did become kind of a big issue in the late 2000s early 2010s and so it would only be a matter of time before something would need to be done <laughs> In as early as 2013, reports would start popping up of Dek Wen being arrested by police. Where in the reports, they would specifically use the word Dek Wen as to who they were targeting. With one crackdown on guns seizing 47,000 weapons. By 2015, reports had come out that they were now actually seizing the motorbikes themselves. And they were giving the Dek Wen criminal sentences and re-education. <laughs> <laughs> One raid busted over 400 racers. This was a massive operation that the police had prepared for for three weeks. A total of 437 people were arrested, seizing 272 motorbikes. The deck when were charged, some of them getting six months in jail or a fine of about 10,000 baht. But on top of this, the police were threatening to actually charge the parents for breaching child protection by allowing their children to break the law. By the mid 2010s, the crack down on Deck Wen was in full swing. It was a full moral panic and every few years reports would pop up of these massive busts. Before the summer of 2020, the police announced a further crackdown on Deck Wen. They were going further than just targeting the Deck Wen themselves. They were actually going towards the garages that were doing the modifications of the vehicles. All the reactions we've had when we ask people about Deck Wen is always negative. None of them are like, oh yeah, the Deck Wen, they're great. No, everyone hates the Deck Wen. But I can't help feel like, I get it. I can see why you'd want to be one. There's like 40 to 100 of you, you're all just tearing up the high streets. Police can't do anything. The moment they come after you, you know the road's like the back of your hands. So you're dipping around the corners, you've got your bay on the back. She's looking right as rain. So I get it. I could see if you're like, if you're from like a poorish area, there's not much going on, but then there's this massive gang you can be a part of. And it's just a sort of free way of living. The Thai authorities attitude was just to clamp down and ban everything, but they weren't really offering a substitute in its place. Things for these young people to do. So an even wider wedge grew between the deck when and mainstream Thai culture. And then, the biggest raids started to happen. More than 1,400 racers were arrested, with 370 motorcycles being seized in a week-long crackdown. In August of 2020, nearly 1,000 deck when were arrested, over 4 million pills were found on them, and 63 of them found to have weapons and ammunition. There were 71 with illegal exhaust pipes, and they confiscated 603 motorcycles. By the end of this whole thing, over 1,600 raids had taken place. Police had arrested more than 5,500 racers, and seized more than 17,700 700 motorcycles nationwide. So maybe, yeah, maybe 10 years ago, somewhere like here would just be absolutely littered with things like that. <laughs> you would have like hundreds of deck wenders everywhere. So you would have main roads being blocked off by deck wen and the police just got pissed. They hated it. And the idea was try and get rid of them. And they did it in a pretty, pretty strong way, which seems to be the Thailand way of doing things.
These large scale crackdowns were methodically planned to get publicity. They would literally line the kids up in the road, handcuff them just to get some good photo ops. They were publicly shaming them and using these photos as a deterrent from other kids doing the same thing. Now we're at a police station, we've spent a few hours here. We figured we'd ask some of the police guys what they knew about Dequan. Um, they were sort of bringing them forth to manage them. So it's quite a lot that's caught each day, but it's, it's more at night time. Uh, in night time in gangs more. But okay. there's already a lot of uh, laws in place and there's in place to stop them, so it's already clamped down. They have like illegal races every night. The police are always on them, so they have to change locations every day. They made a new law where you're not allowed to meet in a group of more than five bikers just because of the street lace racing. You know, hundreds of kids being arrested during a night raid of these dead when. Did seem very heavy handed, but it was one of those things where like, they didn't seem to be going away on their own. If anything, they were escalating, becoming bigger gangs. There was more status and reputation as the gangs got bigger. So they, the police really did just kind of overcorrect for this. Coming from England and seeing the Thai approach to the Dek Wen really made me reflect on like the cultural differences in attitudes towards crime. If Dek Wen existed in England, which we have had similar things before, we would probably have all this talk and conversation about making opportunities and initiatives for young people, which inevitably we wouldn't fund well enough, the problem wouldn't go away and there'd be no real solution. The Thai attitude is more just clamp down and suppress it, brush it out of Bangkok and kind of forget about it everywhere else. There isn't a lot of focus on helping the Dek Wen, it's more also, how do we make wider society happy? And I'm not really stating that one's better than the other. They both have their problems. They're just different attitudes. But you see now in 2023, the problem of the Dek Wen has definitely decreased massively in Bangkok. And so I journeyed up and down Thailand to try and find some of the remaining Dek Wen. Yet to find any. We've seen a few that look slightly Dek Wen-ish, but not full Dek Wen-ese. So we'll, we'll see where it goes. And just as I was running out of hope, one evening when I was in Ao Nang in Krabi, I heard the beautiful sound. Annoyingly, they were so quick, I wasn't quick enough to bring my camera out. And so I didn't film when there was these two kids on one motorbike doing a wheelie. It had all the lights, the engine was loud. It was your classic Dek Wen. I'd finally seen the Dek Wen with my own two eyes. This hated and exiled subculture was there before me. And I'd later found out they still do exist, mainly in various pockets of Thailand in the more rural areas. It's mainly just Bangkok where their numbers have severely decreased. <laughs> but them boys are still out there, hopping wheelies, causing a havoc, and being a nuisance. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to leave a like and subscribe to the channel and watch this video here.